why is this concrete crumbling? How come every single winter this bridge seems to crack more and more and more? What is wrong with this pavement? Well, what's happening here? I'm going to be talking today about freeze-thaw durability of concrete. My name is Tyler Lay and I'm a concrete maniac and I make these videos for you, my concrete lovelies. So when we have concrete and it gets wet and then it freezes, oh, it can crack. No, we don't like cracks. To better understand this, we used to have a micro CT scanner at Oklahoma State University. We used it to look at in the insides of concrete. We could see it in 3D. We could see the aggregates, the voids, the paste, all kinds of amazing things. And in that, we can see some cracks. Yep, there were some cracks before, but after some freezing and thawing, we start to saw, see a lot, lot more cracks. We saw these cracks happen inside the paste about 14 times more often than we did in the aggregates, but the aggregates do crack. So if you get a wet concrete, then it freezes, then you will get yourself some freeze-thaw damage. So, But why in the world does this happen? And that is what this video is all about. Well, concrete, believe it or not, is like a hard sponge. Yep, sponge like this. There's actually a bunch of pores in concrete. If we cut it, polish it and look inside of it. Yep, see all the pores? Kind of looks like a sponge. Well, at least it does to me. Let's talk about those pores in detail. If we zoomed in on certain regions, we'll actually see there's pores that form between the hydration products. And if you zoom in on the hydration product themselves, you'll find out, guess what? There's more pores, a lot more pores inside of that concrete. These larger pores are what we call the air voids, these pores in between the hydration products, I'm going to call the capillary pores, and then these pores themselves inside the hydration products are going to be called gel pores. And what's the difference? It's all about their size and where they're located, but mainly about their size. Air voids are the big boys. They are greater than 10 microns in size. And if you use an air entraining admixture in your concrete while you're making it, you're going to make a larger number of these voids. This is like adding a soap to concrete that, that rolls in bubbles. If you've never heard about this, before, you should check this video out. It's pretty cool. The medium-sized voids are called capillary voids. They're between 0.1 and 10 microns, and the smallest of small are the gel pores less than 0.1 microns. So I'm going to draw this conceptual cartoon of what the innards of concrete look like as far as the pores go, and we're going to be talking about all of them and what they're about. So what role do these voids or pores play when concrete freezes? So if we take these voids, instead of trying to explain it in this complicated cartoon, we're going to try to simplify it with just straws. Yeah, straws. When we have a tub of water and we put in straws of different sizes, the smallest straws are like the gel pores. The medium straws are like the capillary pores, and the largest straws are like the air voids. Now, based on their size, they're going to have different performance. And these straws are going to be a great analogy for what's going on inside of our concrete. Buckle up. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So if we dump some water in this tray, like water trying to come into the concrete, maybe from the top, and it fills up the tray to a certain height, then believe it or not, based on the size of the straw, they're going to draw water up to different levels. Why does this happen? Well, it's called capillary tension. What goes on is when you have a straw and you fill it full of water, there are water molecules that end up there and you get a meniscus. I hope you've heard of this before. That's this shape, this funny shape that happens. And it depends on the surface tension of the fluid and also the type of material the wall is made out of. But in a lot of cases, these there is a larger surface tension between the wall than there is between the liquid, between the water molecules themselves. That draws them up the side. So if I have a straw of a certain diameter and I compare it to another straw of a little smaller diameter and I put water molecules in them again, they are actually going to fill up higher. The meniscus is going to be sharper. And the reason why this is, is the surface tension. See this 
vertical component, see how much larger it is? This sharper angle creates a higher capillary rise. There's also actually a wider number of water molecules that see this tension as well. And this is why the smaller straws are more likely to suck up or be filled with water over a straw of a larger diameter. And this higher tension on these water molecules is actually going to make it harder for the water to freeze. So I showed you this picture before. Remember I, I told you the smallest straws are like the gel pores. They're gonna be more full than the other pores. The capillary pores are gonna be more full than the air voids, but what's gonna happen once it starts to freeze. Well, these smallest pores don't wanna freeze because they've got a higher tension on them. There's gonna be like a slushy type thing formed in the capillary pores, a few ice void, a few ice crystals, but not a ton of them. And the air voids, the largest ones, they're gonna wanna freeze. So in summary here, we have the smallest at the top and the largest at the bottom. The smallest is gonna have for a given amount of moisture, the most water, and the largest voids are going to have the least amount of water. But when it comes to freezing, the smallest pores, although they're full of water, are not going to be likely to freeze, and the larger voids, although they don't have a lot of, a lot of water in them, are going to be more likely to freeze. So how do you measure the amount of water inside the concrete? This is actually really, really important. Well, we do it with something called the degree of saturation, or DOS for short, or DOS. Well, I don't know about you, but when I think of DOS, I think of like old school MS-DOS command line. Yeah, that's that old school computer stuff. Yeah, Bill Gates came up with that. That's how he made his um, first billion on that product. So, but if we have degree of saturation for concrete now, it's 100%, that means all the pores are full. And if we have it at 0%, that means all the pores are empty. These don't happen, these are extremes, only happen in weird lab cases or strange things like that. But most of the time, if I have a 40% DOS, and this doesn't happen that often, except for when the concrete's in a fire or something like that, the gel pores are still full. But at 85%, the capillary pores, they end up being totally full. So what in the world changes this DOS? Well, it is all about the amount of time that water sits on the concrete. And the longer the water sits on the concrete, the higher the DOS is going to be in that concrete. So what happens if the DOS is really high? I've told you about 40, I told you about 85. Well, the critical point is about 88%, about. People are still arguing about it. It changes just a little bit, but about 88%. So what? why is Bill so critical looking there? What, what, why is he so upset? Well, Bill knows, he's a smart dude. He knows that at the critical degree of saturation, the gel pores are full. The capillary pores are full and the air voids just kind of full, not really full at all. And go back to our cartoon of concrete, it looks something like this. Gel pores full, capillary pores full, air voids not so full. So what happens in this case when it freezes? Well, we go back to our conceptual model here of our straws, gel pores no ice, capillary pores some ice, air voids ice wants to form, but remember when water freezes, it expands, grows by 9%. You're like, what? Never heard that before. Well, get yourself your favorite carbonated beverage of choice. And let's say you have a party coming up, you may wanna put it in a freezer to get it cooled quickly. Um, be careful if you do this because once it freezes, the sucker explodes, right? It's a violent, violent explosion. Why? Because water increases by volume by 9% when it turns into ice. So when this happens inside of our concrete and the water starts to freeze, we get ice, but it doesn't form the gel pores. It forms in a big part of the capillary pore. What am I talking about? You know, those capillary pores we talked about before, this little kind of larger region right here, pow, ice crystal forms, shoves, water, water pressures all along, like a pipe being filled and pressured again and again and again and again and again. Oh no, we hope it doesn't burst. This is going on. Ice crystal forms, pressure goes up. Another one, another one, another one. Pressure, pressure, pressure going up, going up. Oh no, what's gonna happen? Well, we look to the air voids. If we zoom in on the air voids, and we look at it with the scanning electron microscope, it looks something like this. And let's zoom in here even further. Look at this boundary here. 
we're gonna actually see that right around each one of the air voids, there's this air void shell. There's this very low permeability, very low porosity material right around the air bubble. And then we can see the other stuff out of the capillary pores kind of coming in where the ice would be. And that air void shell is important. It actually acts, it acts as a pressure relief valve. When the pressure is high enough, the water squirts in and it forms really, really big ice crystals. And that the really low porosity of the shell actually keeps the ice from penetrating back into the capillary pores. That's really important. Does this really happen though? I mean, come on, is this just some made up science thing? Here's a picture of an air void in ambient temperature. Here is one once it's frozen and you can see these ice things growing on the inside of it. Oh my goodness, the air void saves the day! And that's why Bill Gates loved bubbles so much. I mean, seriously, who doesn't love bubbles? They save concrete. And this is why when you see pictures like this and they talk about what do you want an air void system, the one on the left or the one on the right, each one of these voids protect a certain volume around it. It can provide a certain protection of water. And we would much rather have the air void system on the right. We'd much rather have small, well-distributed bubbles throughout our concrete. The air void spacing is critical to the freeze-thaw durability. Small, well-distributed bubbles in our concrete. Does this really happen though? Yup. Here's some CT scans where we have a poor air void system on the left, a good air void spacing on the right. What's the difference? The volume of air is about the same, but the spacing of the bubbles is very different. The one on the right is gonna have great freeze-thaw, the one on the left, not so much. Air volume, ladies and gentlemen, does not equal freeze-thaw durability. It's much more about bubble spacing and you want them tight together. You want a low spacing factor. You also want something called a low SAM number. I've got videos about all of this. Just go check them out. So Bill Gates is happy. This is awesome. In summary, if concrete freezes at this critical degree of saturation or higher than it, then this is a critical time. Ice forms in the capillary pores causing increased pressures. This is going to shove water into an air void, hopefully one's close, and then it's gonna form ice in it that sucks that water up, that keeps it in equilibrium, that reduces that pressure in the body. Closely spaced air voids are critical for the freeze-thaw durability of our concrete, and you can keep this concrete safe by keeping the degree of saturation low. I hope you dug this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. But you might be saying, what happens if there's salts involved? I got a video all about that. That's called salt scaling. But of course, check me out on Instagram and Facebook. Take care, everybody. Peace.